Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, and contrary to popular belief, I think this is the best patch that Blizzard has dropped on us yet, so let me explain, alright, be before you light me up in the comments, I, I know it's coming, uh, this is a bit of a hot take, I'm not just doing this for a sheer reaction, just to be edgy and different, you okay, I got the sunglasses on and the beanie, I'm wearing the beanie because, uh, like, look, look at my hairline guys, like, my, my, my hair is just, 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 just terrible, that's why I'm wearing the beanie, I didn't feel like taking a shower today, so uh, that's, uh, that's why the beanie's going on, alright, so, <laughs> Um, uh, let me explain my point. So, the first point I want to you know, point out is that nothing really brings a community together than a patch note like this where everyone universally agrees that these are just bad patch notes, okay? My damage on the sorcerer literally that cup in half by 40-50%. I'm an arc lightning sorcerer, you know, I do a frosty boys. Um, I haven't done the blizzard build that pretty much like, you know, still like two taps a little with them. I don't do, you know, cheesy stuff like that. I've spent majority of my time farming gear for PvP. You know, this is a pretty much a PvP, you know, channel. Um, but with that being said, um, I, I took it with a grain of salt and I had a lot of time to reflect. I went to bed pretty upset, I'm not gonna lie, because this is what, okay, the new season's coming out, this is what I have to look forward to. This big damage squish, they, no one's gonna do any damage, it really slows the progression of your game down, you know. They, they increase, supposedly increase the, the loot drop, drop rate and while increasing the difficulty, you know, high risk, high reward. No, they, they, they've increased the risk and not necessarily the reward. So I woke up and, you know, after, you know, a little bit of copium here, right? I had time to really digest the patch notes and understand, like, here's two scenarios that goes through my head. When you go into the new season, you already know what you want. You are the, the best builds are already out there. You have Rob playing, you know, 18 hours a day on Twitch. It has all the min max, min max builds for pretty much all the classes. And do you really, let me ask yourself, do you really want to grind? the exact same build you already have on the internal realm for season one and just do it all over again nothing changes you do that four days you'll probably have a low 100 character if you you know play this you know pretty regularly you know about a week you'll have a level 100 character and then for most people you're done with the game at that point uh, actually most people are done with the game when they hit level 80 so you're you're expecting like three three days of play time um in reality unless you're pvp nerd like me then you have to be level 100 to uh to, to really compete otherwise you get squished in the, the fields of hatred um so ask yourself do, do you want to have a week-long season or do you want to have some longevity um, I've had some time to think about this. This is for the Sorcerer, not necessarily all the other classes. The Twisting Blades Rogue is still broken AF, you know, it, especially in PvP. It, you, you can't beat one. Twisting Blades Rogue are in there. They're getting a buff. You know, they have a new aspect or, or, or a cage or a heart cage, actually. But anyway, you're having PTSD right now. But, um, my point I'm trying to make is, do this time when I go through leveling my Sorcerer for Season 1, I don't necessarily have to play the exact same build. This is going to give me time to experiment with other builds that people have not already min-maxed. This kind of breathes a little bit of breath of life back into the leveling experience. I absolutely hate leveling in any game. I come from a long, like, decade string of MMOs. I absolutely hate leveling. I just want to get the in-game. If I can pay to get the in-game, I would, just so I can actually quote-unquote play the game, right? So. I think leveling this time is going to be much more enjoyable because I don't know how the builds are going to work out. This gives me a chance to try some other builds that are not necessarily quote unquote meta, which was post patch, but now I can actually kind of do my own thing. And this kind of makes the leveling experience more digestible, more palatable, at least to me anyway. Me personally, this is not going to be applicable to everyone, but I enjoy adapting. I come from ESO and then the devs have absolutely no clue how to balance the Elder Scrolls Online. They don't even care about the game, game anymore. It's just a cash grab for their new MMO coming out, Starfield, which is an MMO, it's a single player game. I, I can't see that going well for the longevity of that game. It's gonna be popular uh, for like a week and it's just gonna die off. But anyway, kind of pulling it back to Diablo here. Um, I enjoy a challenge and like, from my perspective, seeing everyone one-shot Lilith, you know, on, on all these cheesy builds, that, that is kind of disheartening to me because I do not have the amount of time to invest in those sorts of builds to where I can just go in and just, you know, just one-shot the, the, the hardest challenge in the game, right? Um, I don't have that, that kind of time, uh, nor effort, nor do I want to min-max it and spend, you know, 18 hours a day trying to min-max build, you know, just for that. I want to go in, I want to have fun, right? I want to be a, a little bit competitive. Um, everyone griped about the game being too easy. 
The Addicts Man made a video about the game being too easy. Well, now it's a lot harder. It's slowed down. The way I look at Season 1, it is like when we played Beta. Beta used uber powerful. You had all the uniques. You could ramp up to millions of damage even at level 25, right? And then when Season 1 came out, it got throttled down a little bit, pulled back down to reality. I'm like, okay, you know, this is... A, a bit of a nerf, but you know, we're still doing okay. You know, the loot doesn't drop as often, yada yada. You're able to escalate your damage up to astronomical levels. And the same thing has happened to season one. So act like the eternal realm was quote unquote the beta. And now you're in season one where you're getting throttled down again. Now, here herein lies the problem. Do I think the changes were too much? Um, I don't think they were necessarily too much. I think there was a lot of bugs in the game that was unintended. And you have to look from the... You have to play the devil's advocate. Uh, at least I do. I don't do this often because Blizzard, you know, with the Cosby Room suite, you know, I, this different dev team, different... You cannot... Um, guilty by association Blizzard with, you know, the events that has happened, you know, with the, the other branches, you know, Blizzard in the past. Okay, this dev team actually cares. They communicate. They listen to community feedback, which is very rare in a game. Guys, the Elder Scrolls Online, you can't even communicate with the devs. They do whatever the fuck they want, and then they, they just milk you like a cash cow, okay? Diablo devs actually care. Cut them some slack. I don't do this often, okay? They cannot predict how oppressive and how this damages it and, and how everything stacks. And, you know, they, they cannot predict all this. They, they don't have time to play 18 hours a day. They, they, they're developing the game, okay? Sure, they have play testers and they have, you know, private servers or whatever, but they do not play on the higher echelons of the top 1% of players, okay? They cannot predict everything that happens, all right? So this is the, their shot at nerfing everything can bring them everything back down to reality yeah some things are still op and did some classes like the sorcerer for example get hit hardest of all yeah we did um you could argue the bone necromancer did by just watching a video of rob like like five tapping lilith anyway so it really doesn't matter so bone spear changes were good but you know not not maybe necessarily enough again this is for the upper echelon like the one percent of the one percent of player base that is actually going to reach the pinnacle this plateau all right most players are not going to reach this, okay? They just want something and, and they, they want to go in and casually play. And this does present a bit of a challenge. This does make the season or will make the season more enjoyable, at least for me. If I'm not just blowing through the content, you know, like I, I play Arclash Sorcerer just so I can teleport around all the Nightmare Dungeons and get through it as quickly as possible, all right? Yes, this is going to slow you down, but it is going to add longevity to the game. And it's actually going to make it a little bit more challenging. Now, would I like to have to see a world tier 5 when you hit level 80? I think that would have been a better alternative instead of throttling everyone down to where getting level 80 is just just just, just going to be you know driving like a grindstone right my i do think a world tier 5 post level 80 would kind of fix most of the issues you know the, that we're kind of having you know but um this is a really good attempt by the devs um no no one is really happy about it but think about it i mean this is going to kind of help you know with the longevity we we, we got used to the extreme amounts of damage right we got used to just blowing through content and, and it feels good you know it, it feels good it, it's like being on a drug like like a cocaine you know and once you get used to that you kind of become addicted to it and then when it's kind of taken away from you or throttled um it doesn't feel good you start having withdrawals but i think once players start playing the season once they start experiencing the gameplay once they kind of gets in the motion of like hey you know i don't have to run the exact same build for everything if i don't run the quote unquote meta build that, that my build just doesn't matter um i really hope this opens up builds alternatives to the meta because I, I i hate doing meta slave stuff i absolutely hate it that's why i do pvp and arpgs and mmos just because you know not a lot of people doesn't and it brings me happiness and i honestly think that the shared misery in the community is actually going to ignite us in some way you know, you know, you're not, not ignite us so we're, we're not being ignited we're not going to spontaneously combust it is going to unite not ignite the uh the community and uh i think this is actually a good idea I, it's very unintended obviously blizzard did not put this out to unite the community right but i do believe that there is a power when um everyone has a quote unquote shared enemy you know the enemy of my enemy is my friend so now hopefully if there were any kind of dissociated communities we can all agree that hey yeah this this patch was a little much but devil's advocate i do think um having a, a longer season i'm not sure how long the season lasts i'm pretty new to y'all but i don't know if it lasts two months three months four months i don't really know how long the season lasts i would just assume it's going to be a quarter you know like three months i would rather have 
instead of just having a week worth of playtime in a season, I just drop it, go play a different game for two and a half months. I'd rather have it slow down, throttle, bringing everyone's exp expectations down. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more of a grind fest, but at least I will get more playtime out of the game. Um, again, I enjoy challenges. Most people just wanna, you know, just fly through everything. You know, that's perfectly fine. But uh, I'm adaptable. You know, I, I I enjoy this kind of stuff. I mean, that that's just my you know headset for it. Light me up in the comments if you want. But uh, I do think this is a good patch. Um, I just my opinions on it let me know what you guys think down in the comments i'm just gonna leave it at that i'll be looking forward to seeing getting my ass lit up in the comments but i mean it is what it is um i do think this is a uh, a step in the uh, the the correct direction i i guess you could say um i'm, I'm kind of seeing where, where blizzard's coming from with uh you know pushing out the, these content in the seasons i mean you, you you can't have everyone just go buy a gameplay for a week and just drop it right you have to extend the duration you know keep people playing somehow and this is a one way of doing it is this the best way of doing it um i don't necessarily agree this is the uh, the best way of doing it but it is a way and this does give players a way to experience uh, possibly other classes if your classes got nerfed too hard you want to play other classes other builds if your build got nerfed you want to try out some other builds i know that's what i'm be looking forward to uh, i've only ever played the arc lightning sorcerer as well as the eye sorcerer so now on my first playthrough in season one i'll be playing a flame sword because because i think flame walls actually be really cool um i got lit up in pvp by a flame wall build not gonna lie i'm kind of embarrassed to it but it was freaking awesome your entire screen lights up with firewalls and people just marinate and they just die um it was awesome so um hopefully this does breathe a little bit of light uh, into diablo and a lot of players stop playing it and maybe this will bring people back uh maybe not because you know usually when everyone universally agrees on a patch being bad they kind of drives people away instead of bringing them back in but uh, we'll just see how everything plays out uh this has been horcrux and uh, that's my two cents let me know what you guys think peace